hi guys um i just wanted to come in quickly to tell you that like please don't mind me crying a lot because this was an emotional video for me to do so yeah let's get into it hi guys welcome back to my channel if it is your first time joining welcome to the channel my name is charlotte dolly and on this channel we get tipsy okay so before we get into the video, grab a glass, darling, because this one is a deep one, okay? It's about to get lit, and when it gets lit, you want to grab your glass and keep cool, because darling, it be like that sometimes. Okay, so before I get into the video, I want to tell you guys to not forget to subscribe to my channel, okay? I'm guessing, I'm hoping at this point we have reached 800 subscribers. So I put some onwards ago. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to leave a comment if you like this, this video because it's quite a difficult one for me to sit down and, and talk about this, what I'm going to talk about today. <music> Okay, so I'm gonna talk about my grieving process. Um, I'm still grieving. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, it'd be like that sometimes. So anyway, um, bit of a background story. Oh, not a background story. This is how my story began. Um, in 2017, I had lost my mom. On, the, on this day, the 20th of July, it was a month after my 20th birthday. And I was in my first year of varsity at the time. Um, prior to that, I was doing quite well at varsity. And um, after that had happened, things just, just got messed up. Okay, things... Baby, things spiraled out of control. So, yeah. Um, just in case you're wondering, she was sick. It, it wasn't a a sudden death type of situation. She was sick, but it makes no difference because loss is loss, and um, we just we just had hope that she would 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 get out of it, and but. If that wasn't God's plan so yeah guys if I cry and my makeup ruins it'd be like that sometimes so yeah basically um, 2017 um, the 20th of July we we bid farewell to my mom I was there on the day so that's quite a picture that I I, I I can't I can't get out of my head. Sorry. Okay, so anyway, I won't get into uh, details of how it had happened because no, that's not why we're here. Um. So, um. After the burial, um, I had to go back to school. So, I left home and I went back to school. And I thought, okay, I could, do, I, I can do this. I can do this. Um, you know, um, thing is about losing a parent is that they prepare you without, woo, <laughs> without actually like preparing you. How can I say? It's like they tell my mom used to do this thing all the time where she would say, you know, mangshona. Nienza one two three. Mang shona. Nienza one two three. Ang fully one two three. Do you get what I'm saying? Like she would say, she would get things and be like, yo, nina ang fully mang shona. Gube rides in lini or mang shona. Gube so 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 so. So that's the type of person. That's the things that she would say most of the times. And like we just thought it was weird when it was happening, but in hindsight, I guess it was preparing. So I obviously went to school and um as the words um had stuck in my head to say that she had said at some point she had said something about um when she passes on life doesn't stop 
we have to move on because um that's that's god's plan and there's nothing anyway, we can do so um I, I i went back to school with that mentality to say um no mom would have wanted me to go back to school so i went back to school and i got to school and i was already behind just by the way um just to give you some information it was uh her passing happened between semesters so i was literally starting the semester on monday and on thursday she had passed so um i had to wait that week and the week after that then the week after that two weeks after that i went back to school so i had already missed three weeks of school which is a long long time but anyway um so i went back i had to catch up um so i did kind of catch up and by the time i had caught up i just felt so overwhelmed i felt um i just felt so overwhelmed and that's where things just cut out of control so bit of a background i i did have um some challenges with my mental health prior to the time but it it wasn't really an issue i didn't know that i had issues with my mental health before that time so when that had happened um they came out from the closet and everything started and hey everything was just messed up so um i went to therapy um I, I started going to therapy campus therapy and um uh, yeah I, I i went to therapy and if you know campus therapy or i won't speak about all campuses but the, the school that i went to um you can only see a therapist if you're lucky once a month okay but generally once every two months that's when you see a therapy so i wasn't going to therapy consistently because there was just no appointments there was not um enough time like there wasn't enough therapists to deal with everybody at school on a regular so you kind of had to wait a while um so yeah so i went to therapy the first time i spoke to this guy i had such a nice therapist at the time oh my gosh and i think i only saw him for about three sessions i saw him for three sessions so, so the first time i walked into therapy he was like yeah no baby girl oh my sure go bad <laughs> and he was like, I can see that you're sad and, and I can see that you're not doing well. Um, so he gave me tips and tricks on how, if I feel overwhelmed, what I should do. And stuff. Okay, so um, one of the things that also made it difficult for me to kind of, ooh, sorry, readjust back into school is that I'd gotten so accustomed, the six months prior, I've gotten so accustomed to I, I used to speak to my mom about everything. I used to call her every day or she used to call me every day and um we would talk on the phone. She would give me the tea because baby girl mm, she would always give me the tea. So I was like, you know, I had a taste of home even if like even though I was away from home. So um after that I I didn't have that anymore. That umbilical cord was cut off so it, so it became difficult for me to readjust back to school um most of the times i sorry okay so <clears throat> yeah i spoke to my dad obviously as often as we could speak but it, i mean it's not the same um so yeah so anyway i completed the academic year 
of 2017 and then I came back home um, and then in January when I had to go back to register okay before I get into that while I was in therapy my my last therapy with my first therapist can I put it like that um, he was like I can see okay you have a problem I had a problem with sleeping okay I had very bad insomnia I had a problem with just like I would have anxiety attacks all the time um, as a result of my insomnia and my anxiety I wouldn't go to school because obviously if I don't sleep at night I would have to sleep during the day and um, so he put me on sleeping pills and anti-anxiety meds <sighs> and those are like like so difficult to get because when I ran out and I was with my next therapist she was like you don't need those you fine you just you you okay sis. and I was not okay okay so obviously told my doctor that I was on these pills and she's like nope sis you gotta get a letter of recommendation from your therapist to get those and I'll write you a so it was just a, a, a process anyway so um, I ended up just getting sleeping meds because those you can get over the counter um, yeah so January of 2018 I went back to school and my academic advisor was like sis your results from last year went from A's B's to questionable results so, so what's going on so I told her no I went through some tragic type of situation but I'm back now and she's like okay cool you're back let's register you and we'll see if you feel like you can't cope come back to me so i was like no worries so i blamed myself <laughs> i obviously played myself so she registered me and i was feeling like optimistic for the year so i was like yes 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 Dimlo, we move uh -huh. so i registered I got ready for school and I started attending the February. I, I could say almost perfect attendance. I much things spiraled out of control and I just that was the peak of that was when you know when um in a cartoon uh, a character would like jump off a cliff and then they look down right and then they look up that was ha what happened in March then I plummeted down and um, it was uh, depression it was anxiety together how are guys how are hey who know who knew why hey so Obviously went back to therapy. Uh um yeah, so I don't know in 2018 that's what just generally had a lot of problems. So I, I wasn't constantly going to therapy. Um but yeah, I was sick physically all the time. I if next time I give you I had something else. I was just always sick, but like not intense illnesses, just um minor you know uh, illnesses like minor migraines minor flu fevers and stuff I, I guess it was in hindsight it was um kind of like my mind had programmed my body to respond to my grief like that so i was taking medication all the time um i didn't go to school at some point i stopped going to school because i just felt overwhelmed i couldn't wake up i had no motivation i i was 
I had no will to live. Let me just say that. I was not suicidal. Okay. I was not suicidal. I just had no will to live. I was like, hey. Because at this point, and I was sitting there and being detained, and I was like, What am I gonna do now? Like, I said, for no good, am I just like entertain I'm done with this life thing, so yeah, it'd be like that sometimes, so anyway. Um, yeah, so as I, I, uh, my 2018 was, was a dark year, it was the darkest year of my life. I had had dark years in my life, my heart, 2018, oh my guys, um, things were just generally just so bad, um, so terrible, um, to the point was like i don't want to do this anymore so i decided i'll talk about this in my in another video in a separate video hopefully next week monday so stay tuned for that um i decided i'm going to stop going to school period um but in my stopping going to school i felt bad okay i felt bad so so i stopped attending classes i stopped going to classes i stopped going to tutorials i stopped going to campus but when they said that I should um, submit assignments and stuff, I would submit when I was due to write tests. I would, excuse me, I would write tests. So I put, basically I wasted my time um, doing all of that because nothing had changed. So um, yeah. So anyway, I, 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 oh, so, yeah, I basically wasn't coping at school. I stopped going to school. Yes, that's what I school. I stopped going to school altogether and that became that, it was just that. So um it'd be like that sometimes anyway so um i'm gonna talk about things that people say when you're grieving um that are just like unnecessary okay i'll start off with when people say that no okay you'll be okay she's gone to a better place like please stumble up like don't mention things like that and like all that and um when people say like you'll be all right you'll be fine i mean truthfully and honestly speaking for people who have lost people closest to their lives you you don't become you become fine but you don't become fine because you have lost somebody who means so much to you and yeah so it becomes difficult um oh guys the biggest thing here luna hi and then on top of uh grieving i had to deal with people who were yeah i will mention you learn about pillow back yeah, security guards of my life let me tell you people who are studying my life from a to z go by a register for playback people who look at my life and people who who were who would talk about malicious things um and such so libo ashame Guys, hey, guys, you have to deal with a lot of things, especially when you lose a mom. I go, guys, it goes from people stealing your stuff at home. Hey, <laughs> people steal your stuff, but like my mama's all like Kalifu, any Lifu, you best believe that, that some of your things are gonna go missing. 
um then you have people study your life so they but actually bow okay 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 um so i had to deal with that too um i had to deal with suddenly having to explain myself to people i didn't not that i did but like people would ask questions of of um oh the comments that i got too mm, guys the comments i got people would be like oh okay lala oh i need to yeah because oh yeah what if my mom wanted me to meet her i mean she didn't but that's not the point okay yeah no one's happy um come back and join this call in hey okay oh my oh my mama okay what's up i'm never how Hey, I bet my other relevance. They love irrelevance. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I guess if I was to give advice to people on how to support people who are grieving, just be there for them. It goes a long way. Um, people who check in with you on a daily basis, not checking in saying hi, how are you, how are you coping today? No. Just checking in, having like a casual conversation with the person just to see their moods. Just tell them, if you need anything, I'll be here for you. And guys, I've heard that line so many times. I can't stress this enough. I've heard that, that so many times that when it comes to the people having to be there for you. <laughs> so that's also just the thing so yeah um what else <sighs> okay let's talk about my spirituality so i had questions about my spirituality in general and um it's kind of questioning the whole christian concept the whole god issue and i was like what's the point like what's the point so um <coughs> I, I didn't have to explain this to people but it annoyed me when people came to me and they're like don't worry god and i was just like like that's not what i want to hear i'm not interested in hearing that i've already made up my decision that i'm sapo i'm full next okay at that point i was like i'm full next i don't even want to hear more demo or in okay that which is an ironic thing because i still listen to gospel i still go to church i would still pray okay but i didn't want it to be forced onto me so it'd be like that sometimes so um then i i i, I built my my relationship with god from the ground up so I would, I would ask questions and um the universe works in weird ways so you ask a question and um god would bring an answer through something someone or um, something like that and um okay i'll take that off and if you didn't have an answer i would acknowledge that okay for this one god doesn't have an answer okay so we move so eventually i can't say how i managed to get back but i continued good to go to church and i continued to having conversations god i wouldn't say it was meditation or manifestation or anything i just had conversations of between me and him we'd ask i'd ask why how when get to really to deserve it so it would be um things like that so yeah it 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 it, it, it was a process but at the end 
I, I don't want to say I'm back 100% I'm still a bit skeptical not to say that I'm skeptical but I, I I'm at a better place right now definitely um, another thing is that people mistake your silence as sadness okay I still get it today three years later they'd be like oh why don't you talk why why this generally I'm not somebody who wants to talk about my feelings all the time I don't like it because it's a waste of time to me I talk about my feelings and then what what are you gonna do to, for me after that so a lot of I got a lot of comments saying that I'm very cryptic I'm very hard to decipher and yeah that's just me even even before my grieving period that was just me um yeah oh, okay also another thing i want to talk about is that how death hits me differently now to when it did before it, it doesn't matter whose death it could be oh my god death just hits differently so the following year after i lost my mom i lost my aunt okay my paternal aunt and I don't want to say we were, we're close, like big close, but um, she was my dad's sister, so obviously I I was quite close to her, um, to some extent, and she was also just one person who was there after my mom had passed, you know. So I lost her, and it hit me really hard so that's that's the thing with with losing somebody close to you is that it, you view death in another light what i also like about grief is that as soon as you come out of it okay complete or not completely but as soon as like i'd said 2018 was my my darkest year it was the year that i hit rock bottom so 2019 was a year of rebuilding myself because like i said i will talk about it in another video um i went back to school i started my fresh my life from zero okay when they say you have zero fight left in you like zero you have to start building your life and you lose people along the way there's a lot of losses that happen there's a lot of gains that happen um you have to constantly explain your rehab to people um it's not an easy path to be honest but i was grateful and glad to go back to church uh full time um and the friendships i made um were also quite good the friends that i had before most of them um i still kept into contact i still kept in contact with them so i still they are still my friends right now which i'm very grateful to have them in my life um yeah and i'm i'm, I'm slowly rebuilding re i don't want to say rebranding because i'm still the same person but i'm becoming a a better individual i'm trying to do better with life i am more op optimistic about life i do have the world to live right now um i stopped going to therapy in 2018 um but now i'm i'm, I'm much better I'm much better. I know how to deal with my emotions in general, and I know how to deal with people. Okay, I have a backbone now. So yes. that's my grief story. I have, I know it's a bit all over the place because I had to leave the room. So um, when I get the strength, I will talk about it in a thread in more detail and yeah guys i just wanted to close off this video by sharing a few of my mom's pictures and videos 
Um, it's, I mean, to commemorate, it's been three years since she left the chat, but um, she still lives on in our lives and she's watching from the sidelines and she's cheering us on. She's there in spirit always. So, to say that I miss her is an understatement, but I really do. And life without a mom kind of sucks, but. guys we move so guys thank you so much for tuning in let me go cry in the background and watch the, the video till the end to see her pictures um don't forget to subscribe and comment and leave uh like the video as well don't forget to share the video on your social media platforms and i will see you guys on friday bye guys Just be.